think I need to switch you on the red microphone. There we go. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> it's great to see you. Yes. Good morning. We missed you last Friday. Yeah, I missed being on the show last Friday. Uh, for those who don't know, my husband and I did our very first wedding together. And it was such a privilege to be able to do the ceremony with him, standing with him as friends of ours took their vows together and made a covenant. And I was so blown away that Neil and I could have that kind of experience together. It was a real privilege. Oh, it sounds like it was a lot of yeah. fun. So here we are, Mandy Hart is in the studio, as always on a Friday morning. And if you are there, is there anything that you want listeners to, to do? Do you want them to send in through any questions at all before we start or? What would you like to do? Yes, as always, I would love you to send in some questions. And I would also like you to interact with me during this morning because I'm going to be giving you 12 steps on how to live without fear. And I'm going to be using the analogy of a marathon. So I have a few props with me in the studio. Um, so please go on Facebook Live. I think we're on my one today, which is at Fearful to Fearless. Um, so have a look for that. And then afterwards, we'll post it onto the CCFM page. Absolutely. And that number is 061-798-1075. You may send your questions through that number. All right. And Mandy has some exciting things up her sleeve this morning. I'm yeah. going to let you tell You're going to let me go for oh it. Oh, my <laughs> word. <laughs> so I have some bright socks with me. I'll be showing you if you're on Facebook you Live. Oh, shall I hold them up? Okay, these yes. socks, um, these are my socks. They actually are clean. Um, but these ones say forever forward. Uh, I think you can see that. Yep. And then the other bright pair I have that says courage rules. I don't know which way I should hold it around. <laughs> <laughs> but they say courage rules. And these are Balega socks. Uh, they're running socks. Um, and I've been learning to get fit again. I've been running. I actually ran a half marathon on the weekend with some friends. Oh. So I managed to do it. We ran all around the Cape Peninsula. It was a lovely, lovely race. But as I was preparing for today, I started to think, well, how did I overcome fear? How did I overcome the battles that I had? And we've spoken through various topics over the past two months or so. We've spoken into how to overcome fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of violence, fear of not being enough, a myriad of fears. So I thought today we're going to have a big picture view, Vicky. So we're going to look at things from um, the analogy of running a marathon and running a race. So I will explain the, the story behind these socks as we go through this morning. But before I start, I wanted to just uh, say that some people have been contacting me and saying they want to make a difference in this world. They are afraid of various things. Various people have been contacting me with different fears and how they are battling to overcome them and what they should do. Mm -hmm. um, fear of illness, you know, a whole variety of fears. Whole and I know that you and I have spoken how counseling is just such a great resource, but you know, there's a few other things we can do and fear can really hold you back. Even today as I was driving here, I was listening to a TED talk and this man was sharing about fear of rejection and how it hindered him in work going so far as he wouldn't even present an idea to his bosses because he was afraid when he was rejected when he was six years old, that rejection would come up again. And he said his little six-year-old you know, self would kind of win when he would want to try something new because this little kid's voice would go in his head and say, no, no, you can't do this. You're yeah. not wanted. You're not good enough. You can't do this. And I do think that what happens to us in our childhood and as we grow up does affect our lives. Oh, very much so. So, very yeah. So, so yeah. Um, And earlier on, we also spoke this year. I think the first talk I gave was about your one word. So mm. here I am to remind you, what is your one word and how is it going? Um, I think both you and I said our words were around humility. humility. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm being so mindful of that, of living with humility, living with creativity and humility and how, how does that look for myself? So this is me checking in with you <laughs> and saying to you, how is your one word going? What are you doing? If any of you would like to WhatsApp us and tell us how you're on your journey, um, please, we'd love to hear from you. Or if you have any questions around fear, send them in and I can answer them at the end of the show. So that WhatsApp number, Vicky, do you it's want to uh, give it to them again? It's 061-798-1075. And what you can do is use the keyword Mandy, followed by whatever it is, your question, uh, 
your one, one word, word story, yeah. whatever How's it, it going? is. All right, 061 1075 Yeah. Shall we take voice notes today as yes, well? Yes, with pleasure. Yeah, you can send, send your responses as text or as voice note this morning. So let's get straight in. So even if you are not an athlete, you know, this analogy can still apply to your life. So bear with me. If you think, well, I'm not a runner, uh, I actually don't enjoy exercise, the principles still remain. And remember, we're taking a huge, um, high, big, broad view. We're not drumming down into the nitty gritty. Um, that is for you to apply in your own life. But uh, w words are very important to me. Um, in terms of my love language, you know, some of them is words. My mom always jokes how she, they would just look at me and, and speak a harsh word and I would be crushed. <laughs> So words are very powerful to me. To some people, they might not be as important. But that's why these socks, um, they actually come from a range of socks called grit and grace. And balega is a Zulu word for um, run and get going, basically. And so these socks that say forever forward, to me, when I'm overcoming fear, it's a reminder that I need to keep moving forward. I know that this company actually donates some of the money from these socks to breast cancer research or awareness. Um, but these socks that say courage rules, when I put them on, it's a reminder to me to have courage. So I literally, I'll sit down, put my socks on, and look at these words and think, okay, Mandy, have courage today. Uh, what, you know, what area do I need to have courage in? Um, as you know, that we've moved to a different town and learning the rhythms of a new town, making new friends requires courage. Overcoming certain fears requires yeah. courage. So that's the story behind some of these socks. So when I wear them, I, it's just it's a great reminder to myself to come on, Mandy, you can do it. You know, I've, I've just had the thought. Mm. Wouldn't you say that courage and humility can be flip sides of the same coin? Explain a bit further. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it takes I think it takes a certain a certain amount of humility to to be courageous. Yeah, you're right, because it requires vulnerability. It requires vulnerability. Saying, I have a need. Yeah. yeah. And, I ha and I'm uncertain in this, so I need that courage to step forward. You're right. Yeah, so humility and courage could actually be it quite could. closely linked. Mm. Ties in with our one word this year, so no, you and I exactly. need Ooh. to push forward with the courage. Running the race. That's it. <laughs> So running the race, you know, when you when a person wants to sign up and decide, I'm going to do this race, let's take the analogy of a marathon or a half marathon or a long distance race, um, you make a decision. So you decide, okay, I'm going to run this race. Same with fear. Remember, we're talking about an analogy here. So oh. you recognize, oh, I have certain fears in my life. Fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of even succeeding, uh, fear of illness, fear of death certain phobias it's that awareness that comes up in your mind even as we've been speaking over the past month or two oh i have this fear that i am battling with yeah. so that and i decide now i want to get rid of it i don't want to live with fear it's not god's will for you to live with fear and we as human beings were made to live not in fear fear and love cannot coexist in the same space yeah. in our brains and we were made to live in love and out of relationship and fear hinders that. So first of all, number one, you make that decision. You make a decision, I want to deal with my fears. You make a decision, I'm going to enter that race. So then you actually sign up. You go online or you fill in an entry form at a sports store or you say to your friends, come on, let's do this race together, whether it's a run, walk race, a marathon, whatever it is. So you make a decision and you sign up. So I made this printable that says, make a change today. It's another one of my props for today. So I'm going to ask you, please send me your email address. I'll send this PDF to you, uh, free of charge, no strings attached. And in it, it says, make a change today. I choose to live a fearless life moment by moment, signed by myself. And then you sign your own signature. You print it and you sign your own signature. Fantastic. So please either send it through to Vicky or you could email me at hello at mandyheart.net. But send us your email address and after the show, I'll be sure to get this PDF to you. But this is your signing up. I am committing to dealing with my fears and to overcoming my fears and to living a full, generous life. So you sign up for this race. You enter, you pay your fee and, and off you go. But there's no fee for this one today. I just need your email address. <laughs> <laughs> so you find out what you need to do. So if we're taking a half marathon or marathon, you might get a coach. You look up a program, if, it's, if you've never been an athlete before, you look up maybe couch to 5K, you do some research, but you figure out what do I need to do? Same with your fears. Okay, this is the fear I'm facing. I'm signing up to deal with it. What am I going to do to get over it? 
and you think about what are the steps you need to go through. Do you need to go through counseling? Do you need to talk with someone? Do you need to start journaling? Do you need to change some things in your life? What is it you need? There is so much research out there, so many resources that you can figure out what do you need to do to overcome your fear. And you check, do I have access to the resources? Do I have access to what I need? So if you're going to run, you need good socks that don't cause blisters. You need a pair of shoes. You need some clothing. You can't run without clothing. <laughs> I know some people run barefoot, but you need certain kit for running. It's not a lot of kit, but you do need some stuff. So what are you going to do to get what you need to do? Same with overcoming fear. Do I need to read some books? What do I need to get to get there? So we've gone through quite a few steps quite quickly. I see there are some messages coming in. Do you want to break? Do you want to yeah. go? Yeah, because okay, we've done four steps go. already. Let's All see. All right, let's start with the first one. Mm. This one, she says, uh, Hi, my one word was run life. As I said, I'm doing the Two Oceans 21 kilometer half marathon. How I'm doing? Slow, but I'm doing it. Joined a running club this week. That's wonderful. This lady actually was one that won the one word printouts and she's getting it on Monday. Oh, is that Yes, right? run life. And that's incredible. It ties in with what we're actually speaking about today. Fantastic. So keep up, keep going. Yeah. yeah. And uh, 9769 says, hi there. I would like to remain anonymous, but how does one let go of the fear of losing the one close to you? Yes. Thank you for sharing that. That is a really valid fear. It's a common one. It's a very, very common one because when you love someone, you risk. You risk losing. Um, mm. I think that is something where it takes a process and you could try this race analogy process of what I'm sharing as I go along. But just in a nutshell, um, don't give up loving. Don't give up giving your whole heart to that person and really caring for them. But I think there comes a time where you have to release that person to the Lord. Yes. And you have Absolutely. to say, God, I trust you with mm. those that I love. And I know that life has seasons and our times and our days are in your hands. My times, my days are in your hands. This person that I love is in your hands and I release them to you. When you hold on to someone so closely, they can take the place of the Lord or, or other important things in your heart and you put pressure on that relationship. So I do think those that you love deeply and passionately and crazily, love them with all of your being, but release them to the release Lord. Them. And trust them and I think the key to overcoming that fear is surrender it's release it's saying Lord I, I surrender it to you and I trust you again it comes to trusting in the goodness of God that he will carry you through whatever you have to go through and um, Vicky I mean you you know loss of that first hand of losing someone that you love oh yes yeah yeah mm. yeah yes I do and, and and what you just said about releasing it's 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 bang on yes and and release is something that i think many of us don't find easy to do mm -mm. and and we need the lord's help but it is actually an important thing to do yeah it's a yeah. very very important thing to do to be so you're not just releasing them into thin air yes you're releasing them to the lord who that's loves it. them and that's cares it. about them and has a plan for their lives yes that's and it. is onto them you know yeah. he's onto their issues he's onto whatever it is that mm. concerns them mm. and is also working to perfect that which concerns yeah. them so you know when you trust god with that mm makes a difference. It makes a big difference. Another thing I think that comes up in this one particularly as well is the issue of what can you control and what can't you control. Yeah. You can't control what goes on in another person's life, but you can control your reactions and your responses, the way you love them, the way you release them to the Lord, the way you care for them. And I, for me as well is to live a life with those that I love without having regrets, telling people I love them, caring for them, sh receiving love from them. So um, that when I do release them to the Lord, like you said, it's not just releasing into thin air. It's just saying, God, I trust you for something more. And with this precious gift that you've given me, yeah. the people that I love. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, beautiful. Um, 9749, Mandy, this is Kay. I have failed my driver's test countless times over a period of 16 years. Oh, mm. I feel for you. I can drive a car but haven't been able to pass the test. I've spent so much money and don't know how to approach it differently. Please advise. Oh, that is oh, a tough that one. That is a tough one. I got mine on my third try. When the K53 system came out, I was one of the first people to be part of that system in the early 90s. Yeah. And um, 
I even today I know of plenty of 18 year olds who are not getting it on their first time and I think okay that's resilience you need to keep building up resilience and perhaps I don't know if you've had a driving instructor but ask him what is it that um, causes you to fail and then also work at maybe controlling your nerves if you're a good driver but perhaps you just get too nervous learn to deep breathe learn some relaxation techniques and speak to yourself and say okay I can do this um, so that's just an outset, you know, yeah, you build sure. up some resilience, but you can do it. I'm sure you can get yeah. it. It's just, it's tough. And I think, I think I know how it feels to fail a test. Mm, you know, to fail we all a do. driver's test, especially. It's devastating. Yeah. But you know, Kay, we just pray for you right now in Jesus' name for a breakthrough. Mm. We, we really do. Um, that the next time you do the test, that you will pass it. Yeah. We're going to believe with you that this time God will give you the calm that you need and whatever it is mm. that you need and he will take any fear away and that this time it will happen for you. Yep, exactly. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we got to voice some voice okay, notes. Okay, let's go for it. Yes. Thank you, Carmen. Yeah, Carmen, thank you. It really is a tough situation, especially as you mentioned your illness and mm. um, just what you are going through. Uh, there's no easy answer straight out. Um, I would encourage you maybe if there is someone that could walk with you and mentor you and perhaps guide you, 
I do think mentorship does help. Um, it doesn't always have to cost money to have someone to mentor you, but to help you make some decisions to see how you can get there, to get to your goal and get to where you want to get. It's not an easy answer that Vicky and I could give in, in 10 seconds. No, but no, um, I do think we'll pray with you and trust with you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But perhaps there is someone in your life or in your community that you could say, could you mentor me and help me move towards my goal? And, and as you have big dreams and big goals, which I want to encourage you, keep dreaming them. Don't give up on those dreams. Um, sometimes they take a little longer than what we expect. Sometimes um, they don't happen as quickly as we expect. Mm -hmm. And if we look at all the leaders in the Bible, Joseph was in prison for a number of years. Um, we read about Moses being in the de desert for 40 years before he led the Israelites. Um, Jesus was... <laughs> And carpenter, and a, a, you know, for 30 years, you know, he grew up in his home and, and then he, you know, only had a public ministry for three years. Mm -hmm. Saul, who became Paul, was in the wilderness for two, three years alone. So it may be in the season where you're raising your children, um, cultivate and keep learning. Maybe if you can't get to study, look up some free online courses in the area you're interested in. There are loads of free websites where you can do some online courses. You don't get the certification, but you can still do the online training and it doesn't cost you a cent, just some data. Mm, mm. So I would encourage that, just get someone to work with you towards your goal, um, but don't give up dreaming. Don't allow your fears to give, give, cause you to give up on your dreams. Mm, and, and it's too common that some things take a long, long time. Yeah. God, because God wants to do, God always wants to do a perfect healing and he never yeah. rushes it. Yeah, we're in a rush. The Lord it. isn't ever in a rush. And even what you're going through now, God is using it mm. and turning it around for good. I just want to encourage you in that way. From my own experience with an issue that, that I've had for years and years and years and years. And also just to encourage you, well done for speaking yes, out. Yes, thank know, well you. Well done for sending that. Um, sending that voice mm. note and sharing it with the CCFM family. Sometimes it, it's amazing. It's it's just amazing what that does. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think you're going to be surprised in the days and weeks ahead yeah. at what God shows you. Yeah, definitely. And there's no greater privilege and that than raising your family. So raise your family well. Seek healing in your heart and keep cultivating and pursuing the dreams in your heart. Mm -hmm. Educating. Start with who's right in front of you, the kids your children bring home, the community around you and see what will open up. Because when you're faithful with what you have right in front of you, later on as you get exposed then to the other nations, then you've already been practicing what you're doing. Here, you can practice there as well. So it's both and. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean you have to give up on your dreams if it takes a little longer, but just work steadily towards a process. Mm -hmm. And don't stop seeking God. That's it, God. that's it. Do so you, yes, let me carry you, you on. want to continue. Yeah, okay. and then we can come we'll, back we'll to we'll some more notes. Some yeah. Somebody's desperately trying to to, to, to call here. Do you want to answer? We can answer sure. that call. Let's go for it. And <laughs> sure. then I can carry on with my beautiful race analogy. CCFM, good morning. You're live on air. Hi. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. O two one. O two one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. We, we, we. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, nine, four. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. That is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so 
so much for the offer and thank you so much for calling in. Take care. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> Mandy. Yes, we, we, that's wonderful. So please, when you get your driver's license, please, please let us let know. Us we'll celebrate know. with you and we'll encourage more and more people out there to get their driver's license. There's no need to fear learning to drive or getting out there on the road. Mm. It opens up a whole world to you when you can get out Absolutely. and about. <laughs> So going, zooming out again, um, I'm speaking to you about how to overcome your fears using a race analogy. And clearly it's something that's in inspiring people because of the responses we're getting. Yeah. So we first spoke about making a decision, signing up, um, entering the race. I spoke about this PDF that I can send you for free. If you email me your email address or you can send it to Vicky right now. But email me hello at Mandy Hart, M A N D I H A R T dot net, and I will send it to you. But that is your commitment to dealing with your specific fears, mm. um, your commitment to overcoming your fears to stop you from living the dreams, and basically you're living your best life. So you've signed up, you've done some research, you figured out what do you need to do to overcome your fears, and then you get started. You start your training program. And with any training program, when you're running a race, you don't start out at the end and you run the long distances. You start with little baby steps. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine is just, has decided to get fit again, and she's doing a couch to 5K program and starts off very slowly with walking, hardly any running. If you're training for a marathon or a half marathon, the assumption is that you have a base level of fitness, but that you get started. You start off slowly. You start off with maybe three kilometers. You don't start off with 15 or 20 kilometers or even 10 kilometers, yeah. but you start off slowly and you mix your training. You do strength training, you do speed work, you pay attention to your nutrition, make sure you sleep well, wear good socks, um, clothing that protects you from the elements but you get started on your program and so with overcoming fear you need to start somewhere you need to recognize yes I have this fear and this is what I want to do so I get started but there are times where you get discouraged times where when you're training for a marathon or a half marathon you don't feel good mm -hmm. and you're thinking oh my legs are tired I don't feel like going for a run today it's not working out my, maybe my heart rate's a bit more elevated um, things are tough and that's where resilience comes in because when you overcome your fears you will fall down again you will struggle but you need to get up again and say i can do this i can overcome this and i know that if i can overcome my fear of violence um, and fear of being attacked again and just being so scared with all that adrenaline in my bloodstream if i can overcome that if i can overcome fear of failure so can you because I can do it. God doesn't play favorites. You know, we all loved. <laughs> you can also do it. But you need to get started. Do you need to change your thought patterns? Do you need to forgive? Do you yeah. need to pay attention to your body? You know, what do you need to do? There's all these elements in overcoming fear. And then you need to keep going. So you've got to remember your goal. Put your goal up somewhere, whether it's your program, whether it is you telling somebody to be accountable to them. But put your goal up somewhere. My goal is to complete this half marathon or this marathon. Same with fear. Write it down somewhere. My goal is to live a fearless life. My goal is to live victorious. My goal is to overcome whatever it might be. My goal is to get my driving license. Mm. My goal is to get strong again. My goal is to restore relationships with my family because they might be broken. And fear affects all of those things. Mm. So you got to keep going. You have to learn to adapt, adapt to new living patterns, new ways of thinking, renewing your mind to change the way you think. When you start running and preparing to run a marathon and you run all these races, you got to remind yourself, I need courage. I need to keep going because courage rules. Courage is what pushes us forward. And so you need to say, okay, well, if I need to learn to forgive, um, then how can I have the courage to forgive? And it might be a process. You might do, need to do a study. You might need to pray with somebody. There's different things that you need to do. Yeah. Do we want to break in that point? I've got... Want to We've got not too long. Not too to long. Go. Okay. We, there, there are a couple of voice notes. Well, let me finish we'll and then... Finish yeah, and then let's do that. And then we'll listen to them. So I'm giving you 12 steps. And again, if you want the notes, I'm happy to send it through to you and you can formulate your own plan from these race steps. Um, and I can send you the PDF. But so we've been speaking about making a decision to overcome fear, researching your program, doing what you need to do, get started adapting. And then don't forget to celebrate. Celebrate small wins. Mm. Celebrate getting fitter. Celebrate, okay, today I have embraced this thing. Today I slept well. I wasn't, you know, because for me, with being afraid at night, particularly, yeah. when I would sleep well the next morning, I would just 
jump for joy <laughs> so don't forget to celebrate the small things because when you celebrate things you feel good and it gives you the motivation to go forward and as you continue suddenly you'll start to notice a new pattern a new way of living and that's like doing the race you actually now sign up you arrive you get dressed you present you do it you work at overcoming your fear you run the race you do it and then afterwards Sometimes I know that our bodies want to go to like a homeostasis, basic, you know, like kind of neutral feeling. Mm. We don't want to have too many highs or too many too lows. Many lows. Yeah. So when well, you have, out. yeah, so mm. when we have that euphoria, like that's it I've overcome, maybe the next day you might wake up feeling down. In um, fact, it normally does It normally that. does that. Mm. You know, you, and literally, even if you run a race, you feel so euphoric. You have your medal, you take photos, Instagram ready pictures, and you're all, you know, pumped. And the next day you wake up feeling really down and that's something to consider when you are working at overcoming fear and you have certain victories be aware that maybe that afternoon or the next day you might feel down you're gonna hit a low and that is totally normal yeah, i want to tell you it normal. is totally normal but mm -hmm. don't let that funk discourage you yeah. don't let it say oh great i'm nowhere i can't you need to get up again and you need to start the process and saying i can be victorious i can overcome and I find for myself, um, now that I've worked through certain things, running through Stellenbosch, I, I still st grin, I start smiling <laughs> because I'm thinking, wow, I'm exploring new territories. I'm not afraid to explore new territories. I can do this. Um, at the same time, obviously following the Holy Spirit, so if I feel a nudging, don't go down this road, I don't. Yeah. Um, and there's wisdom with how we need to live our lives. But I find myself just having such incredible joy and just being so thankful because thankfulness cultivates joy. So don't yes, forget yes. at the end of the race, when you feel like, yes, I've got achieved my goal, that you are thankful for that. Yeah. So those are the 12 steps that I've told you. Again, it's, um, I can send it to you, so please let me know if you'd like it. Um, but learning to live fearlessly means you embrace trying. Embrace it. Say, I can give it a go. And whatever my fear is, I can give it a go. I can embrace trying. So before, I'd love one minute at the end just to read Psalm 62 from the Passion Translation, some parts That's of it. Fine. But let's quickly listen and then we okay. can, we have um, two, one sure, minute left. I'm not sure that we've got too much time. All right, but, but if Mandy doesn't get to your, to your message, don't worry, send it to her at yes. hello at mandyheart.net. Heart. That's it. And she will respond to you. That's her mm. email. Let's just listen to this voice note. And, and and thank you and thank you very much we can't mm. get to all the other voice notes we will run out of time we literally have 30 seconds <laughs> 30 seconds well what a wonderful message thank you what so a much message. i just want to read two lines to you um i stand silently to listen to the one i love waiting as long as it takes for the lord to rescue me for god alone has become my savior he alone is my safe place his wraparound presence always protects me he is my champion defender. There is no risk of failure with God. So why would I let worry paralyze me even when troubles multiply around me? 
I'd like to finish with that and um, know that God's wraparound presence is what will carry you. Beautiful. God bless. God bless. And remember, it's hello at mandyheart.net.